Hello everyone. We had a little trouble getting on tonight. But yay, there we got somebody. Okay. Hi, Diana. Hey, please let me know that you guys are on. We had a little trouble um, hooking up tonight. <laughs> hello, Shanette. Good to have you on. Hello, hello. Hi, Tiffany. Yes, please comment and let us know that you're on. Um, we're not sure if, uh, if, oh, uh, excuse me, if Facebook changed up their settings or whatever, but it was kind of different this time to get on tonight. Hi, Rosario. So we'll give a few minutes since we're a couple minutes late here to see if y'all want to hop on here. Comment, like, share. And we want to remind you also that this will be posted on YouTube later. Uh, so you can always find these replays on Facebook Live or our YouTube channel, um, Dominion Worship Center. Hello, hello, more of you are joining in. It's good. Please let us know if you're on. Hello, hello, Diana Hernandez, hello. Hi, Christina, hello, hello. Hey, at least we got on here finally. Hmm, glory. I'm excited about tonight's topic, too. It's going to be a good one. Spiritual growth. Hello, Clarissa and Johnny. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, spiritual growth. So how are your is your uh, week going, folks? The weather has changed. It's really nice. It uh, is super duper. <laughs> Triple digits are gone. Yeah, are they really gone, dear? Uh, I. You're not sure. There's nothing uh, that they're predicting in the next ten days. Yeah, so we had nice skies, great weather. Hi, guys. Good to have you on. Yes. All righty. <clears throat> so here we go. All right, why don't you pray? So, Lord, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for the internet. Uh, that as we press through, God, that there's going to be a great message that comes forth that will edify the people, that will strengthen them, that will bring spiritual growth to their lives. Lord, I ask that you would um, just quicken to us what needs to be said, not said. Uh, and that you would minister life to those that are hearing now and those that will watch on the replay. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. In uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and uh, starting verse 11, we'll go through verse 16. It says, He himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, pro some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. It says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue, stature of the fullness of Christ, that we no longer, that we should no longer be chilled every wind of doctrine in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up in all things into, into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together where every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part, every part does its share and causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And so God wants us to grow up. He wants us to mature. And, uh, you know, it, it, my wife was listening to something that somebody had uh, shared and sent to her and and uh, this person had been talking about uh, 
I'd been looking at this for a couple of weeks, getting ready to do something. And so when she shared that this morning, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of like the vein I'm thinking. But she was and talking, was that? she was talking about <laughs> uh, how uh, people, they pray the prayer to accept Christ as their personal savior. And then all people expect them to do is show up and, and have a seat in the church uh, so we can fill the, the, the seats. But they're not growing, they're not maturing, they're not changing, you know, and, uh, you know, if, if you don't change, you're never going to grow because part of growing is you got to change. And so, so I believe that, that the Lord's uh, uh, reminding us that, you know, especially this last year and a half or so, did you grow? Okay. I mean, in the lockdown and, and all the stuff that was going on, there was, there was great opportunities for us to mature and grow on how to deal with things and, and how to respond to people in a correct way, respond like the Lord would respond. Amen. In Amen. 2 Corinthians 13, 9, in the Living Bible, it says, Our greatest wish and prayer is that you will become mature Christians. Mm. You know, mature Christians. And, you know, and I, I believe that... <clears throat> Um, it's sad, I think, that when when we look at different things in, in Christians versus non-Christians, and uh, when it when you look at like the divorce rate, and the divorce rate is almost as high as as non-Christians, and the Christians should do better than that. Okay, we should really be doing much better, and so I think that we need to uh, realize that you know we we get saved but he doesn't get saved just to leave us the way we are. You know, we used to say it as if that was the case, then when we get saved, let, let just take a load up right away, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but in Romans uh, eight twenty nine says, we're predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. So we're supposed to become more like Christ. And, and if we're going to become more like Christ, we have to have the, uh, a genuine, accurate, uh, uh, way or, or how we see him. And so there's religious people can teach certain things and, you know, but we have to look at the scripture and grow from the scripture. And it's so important to have beyond the fat and the foundation of, of everything we do, because uh, this teaches us, this book teaches us how we're supposed to respond and the different things that, that we, that, that the Lord expects us to do. And he showed us in how he dealt with things that, that we can learn things and from Bible stories and, and how people reacted or responded in a wrong way and the, the price they paid and the cost. And so we can learn from that. Amen. Right. And may I just say that um, through the last year and a half, uh, coming up on two years, boy, that not that something? That um, if our foundation was shook, it needed to be because what were we... What was our foundation? Was it Jesus? Were we trusting in him? Mm -hmm. Were we trusting in man? Were we trusting in the government? You know, these kind of things. It, sh it shook us and it needed to. And what the prophets are saying too, that we are still contending for the faith. We are in a fight. And there is a, a delusion, a spirit of delusionment and deception over the body and over America, especially to try to just get us to cool down and not see things accurately, not stand up for, to be a Christian. And um, what's being shook is our popular Christianity, right, mm -hmm. honey? You know, as you said, getting into the, uh, getting saved and just come to church. And I heard someone say at our church last week, you know, we have been fed greatly. We have been we have received a lot of teaching and and this person said so what am i doing with it and i guess that would be the question for the spiritual growth is everything that you've heard and learned are you applying it and we want to remind you of those things tonight to apply it to grow mm -hmm. because the times that we are living in warrant it yep. we need to have a strong foundation in jesus and and as we weigh it you know, am I trusting in man or am I trusting in the Lord? Do I have a fear of man or do I have a spirit of fear or am I trusting in the Lord? 
And I love the scripture that you started with, honey. It's one of my favorite scriptures of the apostles and prophets that in the fivefold ministry, that we are to equip the saints, that we, even tonight, it's an equipping time. It's not a time to take lightly, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, because there's times where we just need to have it, the word read to us, and you need to have the word read to you, like you do it, and read it out loud so that you will hear it as well. So spiritual growth is very, very vital right now in the times that we are living in, because if we're not, we will be tossed to and fro. Amen. And, and I think that part of, part of it is that, that uh, many times, uh, if, if as an individual, if we don't catch the importance of having proper foundation and the importance of living like a Christian and all the, the, the benefits that come along with being a Christian where God uh, releases things to us, gives us wisdom, insight, discernment, guidance, direction, all of those things. Well, then we just kind of slough it off like, well, this is not important because I'm too busy. I'm too busy working. I'm too busy uh, getting an education. And, and the thing is, you have to work. That's very important. We to get an education is a is a great plus. If you don't have an education, you aren't going to get a very good job. Okay, and so so we have to be it, but we have to be able to balance those things and realize that we can't put everything into that and nothing into our spiritual uh, growth and spiritual development. Because you know you read in in Proverbs and and all through the Scripture about if if you will follow the Lord and all the things He's going to do to you. Amen. You know it's more than just going to heaven. He wants to bless us and take care of us and guide and direct us and do great things here now in this time. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And strengthen us Amen. to give us courage so that we will be fearless Christians. Yeah. Uh, someone said, I've heard them recently also say, um, you know, do you have a fear of death? Really, we as Christians should not even have a fear of death because mm -hmm. we know where we're going. So why do we get so worked up even about COVID? I've even mm -hmm. said that same thing. You know, um, Lord, you you number you promised to number my days. You know, mm -hmm. and so I know there's wisdom in taking care of my body. My temp, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's part of spiritual growth too, as recognizing that I need to take care of myself. And um, so I take care of myself health wise, but take care of myself spiritually as well. So, um, yeah, amen. Yeah. And so, one of the, I believe, one big misconception about spiritual growth is that it just comes automatically. Mm. And there is, there's a degree of it that comes automatically uh, if, depending on what you're doing. If you never put yourself, in a position uh, to be taught, uh, to hear a message and apply that message to your life and make changes according to what you're hearing and what you're being taught, mm -hmm. then you're not going to grow. Okay. And just, you know, it doesn't come by osmosis and, you know, and, you know, you can put the Bible under your pillow and lay on it at night, but I don't think you're going to wake up in the tomorrow morning and, and be any smarter. I mean, God can supernaturally <laughs> do things at times, but it's not that that's not how it's happening. All right. Right. In Hebrews five, verse 12, and he's and, and he's writing to the Hebrews. and He says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, mm. you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only in milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And so he's telling them that, you know, by this time, you should be teaching others how to live and how to walk and, and the things that you need to do as a, as a born again Christian. And he says, but we got to go back and teach you the basics again. They forgot about the basics. Okay. And so we need to, uh, you know, be line upon line, precept upon, upon precept and keep learning and growing and learning and growing and, and make the changes that we need from time to time. One of the things since you brought up about, um, you know, when we get saved is when you were saved, you told people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
That's part of spiritual growth is you are sharing your testimony. You're sharing about the goodness of God, how good Jesus is in in my life. And, um, you know, those are some of the foundational things that we need to get back to uh, is sharing your faith, praying for people. That will cause you to grow spiritually and supernaturally is when we get out of the way and let the Lord lead and guide us to where we need to uh, minister out yep. outside of the church. Yep. The church is a place to just learn and grow in, in, in there, but then we have to practice it. We have to use it. Um, but what Bishop Hammond says about the spiritual gifts, if you don't use it, you'll mm -hmm. lose it. Well, you may not, not it, it will grow, grow dormant and it needs to be stirred up. I don't think that you actually you, you lose it, but um, it grows dormant. And so we activate you tonight. We stir you up to faith and good works. Amen. A lot of people are talking about revival and to revive means to revive back again something that was alive or something that was active and in and in and, and doing things and they've kind of gone dormant and uh, uh, just backed off and so you know God wants to stir you up and and it's understandable how people can become uh, run over during this whole COVID thing and, and the lockdowns and everything else and even some of the stuff that's still going on and they're talking to expand on, you know, it's enough to discourage anybody. But now's the time we need to rise up in faith, rise up and press into God and see what he tells us, see what how he guides and directs us to do what we need to do. Amen? Yeah, it, I mean, just uh, the scripture in Second Corinthians thirteen five. It says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Mm -hmm. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? So Jesus lives inside of you, but we are to examine ourselves time to time. Not always to be introspective, yeah. but we really need to ask the Lord, Lord, do I have your heart? Am I truly walking for you? Do I have a passion for you. And if I don't, please stir it up. Lord, mm -hmm. forgive me. You know, just continually walking with the Lord and and causing um, the fire to be continually stirred up in your life. And so um, examine mm -hmm. ourselves. You know, am, when was the last time I talked to somebody about Jesus? When was the last time I prayed for somebody? When was the last time that I stepped out of my comfort zone and did something that the Lord was asking me to do? See, as you get strong in the Lord, you become bold. And, um, you know, think of the book of Acts church, how strong they were, how bold, how full of courage. But they had persecution on every side but they did not back down, nor did they deny Christ, you see? So this is the kind of faith that we're looking for. And, and so that's the kind of thing that's being shaped, shaken from our foundation is really a low-level Christianity. Lukewarm Christianity, you know, is being shaken off of us. Because we can't live the way that we've done things in the past. There is a new order, you know. Even the church is being reshaped. Um, so it's being reconstructed. Um, things are being examined and things like that. And, and it's all a good thing, you know. Because it's not all to get everybody back to church. Right, honey? I mean, it's like, are you in love with Jesus? And that then will cause an overflow, an outflow of, um, of your relationship with God where you will want to learn and grow more. In uh, Hebrews 5.11, in the Amplified, uh, the last part of the verse says, you've become dull in your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slothful in achieving spiritual insight. And it's like your, your desires, your appetite has changed completely. 
you know, and I think that one of the things you can do is, is you can, we can check ourselves. Am I growing spiritually or have I, have I stopped and even have I, have I backed up? Okay. Mm. That where, where I'm at today, where was I at six months ago or a year from now? Am I farther ahead now than I was two years ago? Okay. If not, then we have to take inventory and go, well, why, why am I not growing? You know, because, you know, you can grow old without growing up. Okay. Mm, mm -hmm. And, and so, uh, you know, spiritual growth is intentional that, that you basically, it's a determination to do or act it's done by design. And so it's like, you know, sometimes you're forced to do things and, uh, and you go, okay, I'll do it because I'm forced. But when was the last time you took initiative to do something, you know, when was the last time that you decide to pray, not because you're in trouble or you're fearful, okay, but you decided to pray because you just felt you wanted to pray? When was the last time that you really read the scripture to learn something when you weren't in trouble? <laughs> okay. And, and, That's a good one, and the thing is that, that, uh, you know, when you're in trouble, it's hard to build faith when you're in trouble and you're, you're facing something that's really tragic or, or mm. taxful taxing you. Okay. You need to build faith, uh, in the, in the good times and keep it strong. So if you hit a speed bump, you can keep going and, and not back down. Amen. <clears throat> so it re requires commitment and effort, okay? Uh, if you, you know, the Bible says not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And, and uh, <clears throat> I find it interesting that, you know, they wanted to lock down the churches and shut down the churches and shut us up. But but God said, you know, we're going to keep going. And and so um, to uh, it takes effort to get up on a Sunday morning whenever you're, or an evening whenever you're going to church and to get dressed, get ready, drive there, and, and go in and, and set and, and listen and, and participate, okay? And, and it takes effort to do that. It takes effort to take time where you would rather be doing uh, something like watching TV or something, and I'm going to take time to read and study. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And you go, well, that's, that's for people that are, are mm -hmm. preachers and stuff like that because they got to teach other people. No, you can learn things, okay? Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot, and it can, it can cause great things in your life to take place. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's, uh, I was uh, having a conversation with... Um, someone about this person uh, in the body of Christ has emerged out of nowhere, okay? Not that we want to make a name for ourselves or anything like that, or, or it's not a thermometer to gauge, well, I guess if I'm not popular, then um, I'm not praying enough. No, please don't take this this way. But, but um, this person like arose on the scene, uh, it seemingly very quickly, but it took a period of 20 years where she was praying, interceding, accepting the, the assignments of the Lord, not caring if she was noticed whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You see, in this time, God will purify motives as well. You see? And so that was a key in praying, in pursuing God, no matter when no one saw. I think that is so vital um, because your relationship with God needs strengthened. You know, your, God needs to give you the pat on the back. Man will, but it's after you have spent time with him and he has encouraged you and he has blessed you and he has strengthened you. Oftentimes we want to be activated into doing what God is asking us to do rather than spending that time ourselves and getting his heart and getting his plan for our life and getting his plan adjusted into our plan. In other words, sometimes our plans have to be erased to take up God's heart. And so um, I just encourage you that there is great reward seeking the Lord and growing in him. There is great reward. I'm telling you, God is wanting to put great favor upon each and every one of us. 
and we're wanting doors to open, mm -hmm. but this is a key. We're giving you a key here for spiritual growth is to get with God. Amen? See, the thing is, if you listen to the media, even social media, okay, they, they portray Christians as weak, uh, not very smart. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're chasing after something that, that is not going to help them or benefit them. And, and the, the world thinks that they have a better way. And uh, in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. When you have no revelation of what walking with Jesus and following Jesus will do for your life, then you, you'll throw it off to the side. It will become a minor thing to you instead of, of the, the main thing in your life that helps guide and direct and bless you in every other area of your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we use the thing that says, I've decided to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've decided to follow Jesus, okay? It's, no turning back. Yeah, no turning back. It means to proceed or come after, okay? Uh, and I've been saved for 50 years, and I remember back in the Jesus movement, there were people getting saved, you know, dozens a week and everything else. But the, the sad thing was that there were a lot of them that didn't stay. They, they, they tried it for a while, and, well, I'm going back to my old way of life and stuff like that. Well, the Bible says we've been crucified with Christ, Nevertheless, I live, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, so the, the, our old sin nature has been crucified with Christ. We've been set free. And so God wants to pour more into us and cause us to grow up, amen? It's like being a gym member, but not a gym attender, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, how many people have gym memberships, but you don't go? Or, or I heard, I heard a, a minister the other day said that, you know, he goes to the gym and he goes, yeah, there's people that come there. And he says, all I see him do for 30 minutes is walk around. Mm -hmm. I never see him get on a machine or lift a weight or whatever. It's like, why are they there? Okay. And so we, we need to really make a decision and, and with sincerity say, no, I'm, I'm going, I'm going for God. Okay. And, uh, you know, some people say, well, if I go for God, he's going to make me become a, a this or that, the other thing. He's not going to make you anything that you're not called to be, okay? And he'll make you enjoy it before you ever become it. Yeah, and you have to realize that's fear talking. That's right. That is fear talking, okay? <laughs> In uh, uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2, it says to continue to work out your salvation, okay? Mm -hmm. And so uh, God's a part of our growth, but so are we. Okay, he has a part, but we have a part. And sometimes what people are doing, they're waiting for God to do it. And he goes, I'm waiting for you. Okay, mm. I'm waiting for you. And so becoming like Jesus is the result of the commitment we make. The commitment we make. When we make a commitment to him, okay, you know, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I'll follow. Okay, you know, you're not drug off by your friends. If those are the kind of friends you have, you need to find some new ones, yeah. okay? That I'm going after God. I'm going after God. Hallelujah. I remember when I first got saved, and, and I worked with the kid, and, and the kid made fun, and he, he, would, he would say silly stuff like, oh, you're one of them holy rollers and stuff like that. And I just told him, I said, yeah, one day you'll be one too. Mm -hmm. And probably about three years later, he got saved. Mm -hmm. So glory to God. Well, it's like you have taught us, honey. He said, if you want to go to the next level, if you want to move on with God, sometimes you have to look at and go, who do I have to leave behind in order to go forward? Mm -hmm. That, you know, not everybody wants to go where you are. And so um, if you decide to go forward, maybe you're the leader and they'll follow. Amen. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. maybe they will come. But somebody has to keep moving on and pressing on and growing in God because there is so much destiny inside each and every one of you that is watching, but you have limited yourself in so many areas. And, and um, so I just break off that hesitation, that doubt and unbelief, and I say, you know, you are stronger than what you think. You are farther along than what you think. See, the enemy could, would lie and get you into comparing yourself one to another. And so um, these are kind of behaviors and thought patterns that have to stop yep. in Jesus' name. You have to say, no, I 
I love God and I am moving forward and I know who I am and I will trust him. Yes, I may uh, have it in fear and trembling as I walk forward, but I am going to make it because he will not cause my foot to stumble mm -hmm. in Jesus name. Amen. You see, we become whatever we're committed to. Okay. Without commitment, spiritual growth is like it's circumstantial not intentional, and sometimes it's not at all, okay, all right? And so uh, some people say that spiritual growth is too important to leave to circumstance. It is. You know, well, I've, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. Mm -hmm. No, you need to commit to it, amen? Uh, Romans 6 uh, says, offer and yield yourself to God. We yield ourselves to the Lord, okay? We yield ourselves, and we're going to follow him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Spiritual growth is for every believer. Every believer. Some people that, well, it's just, it's just for special people and ministers and stuff like that. And, and I'm just, a, I'm just, I just work in, in and I, no, you, it's you too. Okay. It's you too. Um, Paul compared train to training athletes. Okay. Look at uh, 2 Timothy. Chapter four. You know, while you're finding that scripture, honey, I I don't know um, whether some folks watching have pieced it together that one of the things and advantages that I feel that my hubby has is that he has worked in the world. He understands those things that you face. And we have our own Pastor Harold that is working in in the world and he makes, um, you know, connections out there and advancing out there. So, you know, so whenever he says we think that spiritual growth is for those that are just, quote, you know, pastors or whatever, um, God spoke to us when we were, um, like, connected leaders, mm -hmm. when we um, worked in children's ministry, God spoke to us. The passion to grow for God just kept growing and growing and growing. And the example for you was that you didn't want to be a pastor. And he knocked on your heart and, you know, you surrendered. But see, there's no better place to be than in his perfect will. And some of you are afraid of his perfect will. And I'm telling you, I'm prophesying right now that there's some spouses that are holding the other one back because of fear. Like God really wants to do some amazing things in your life. I'm not talking about that you're going to be pastoring or whatever, but there's, there's some adventures. We've often said that our lives are adventurous. I'm telling you. You know? And um, it's, it's beautiful when spouses can come into agreement and move forward. So um, I break that off of <clears throat> marriages that, and I speak to you that you will be one in the spirit and not hold each other back in Jesus' name. So in 1 Timothy 4, <clears throat> verse 7, it says, But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. The Amplified says, for physical training is of some value, and it is, okay? I believe we should be physically fit, all right? There's nothing wrong with going to the gym, but if you go to the gym seven days and you never open your Bible, you never pray, it's unbalanced, okay? And so it says the physical training is of some value, useful for a little, but godliness, miss listen to this, spiritual training is useful and of value in everything and in every way, for it holds promise for this present life and also for the life which is to come. See, some people think that spiritual, spiritual growth is just for the sweet by and by. No, that's for now, okay? And then down in verse 12, it said, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Okay, so how are you doing in that? Okay, it says, 
till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that's in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying off of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue mm -hmm. in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Okay? And so, you know, in That's good, honey. We, need to, we need to grow in God. Okay? We need some stability in God right now. I mean, there's a whole lot of different things shaking. And, and if you don't have much faith in God and realize you, you trust God and the faithfulness of God and God hasn't ever, ever, ever turned his back on his people, if you don't have that built in you, established mm. in you like rebar and concrete, mm -hmm. you'll shake. You'll begin to shake and then you, you'll pull up back and, and it can cause you to go and do things that you wouldn't normally do. Come on. And we don't want you doing that. Man, be strong in the Lord and the power of his mm. might that you can stand against all the wiles and the tricks of the devil. Ooh, I love that. Hallelujah. Honey. There's power on that. Amen. <laughs> Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes, be strong in the Lord. I speak to you. Be strong in the Lord. Now listen to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10. It says, hear my son and receive my sayings. And the years of your life will be many. Hmm. What? Huh. It says... I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you'll not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so he says, you know, hear my son and receive my sayings and the years of your life will be many. Mm. Amen. I mean, it's like when, when, when you grow in God and you get to the point where you, you've got some discernment, you've got some wisdom, you realize what, you, what, what direction you're supposed to go and you stick to it and you end up comp completing the, the, the goal that you had, the, the thing that God wanted you to do, and, and it becomes a blessing not only to you, but those around you and the people that you, that you helped, mm -hmm. okay? Whether it's business or whatever. You become a blessing to those around you. Amen? I mean, you if you want to be in business today, you better have some, some spiritual understanding and some spiritual stamina to be able to make the right choices and the right decisions. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Uh, another scripture that um, the Lord gave me, honey, was um, about uh, being connected to the vine and mm -hmm. what fruit... Uh, yep. Yep. It is um, Matthew seven seventeen through 19 in the Passion Translation. It says, so if the tree is good, it will produce good fruit. But if the tree is bad, it will bear only rotten fruit and deserves to be cut down and burned. And then in Matthew seven twenty, it says, you'll know them by the obvious fruit of their lives and ministries. So as we talk about spiritual growth, Will people know that you love Jesus <laughs> by the fruit? They will know them by the fruit. Your fruit should be Jesus. People should see Jesus. Oh, yeah, they're one of those Jesus followers. That would be the, one of the highest compliments that you could give or that you could get. Or how about, you know, well, they, they love to pray. Oh, well, thank you, you know. Well, I'm going to come ask you to pray because I know that God hears you. See, that's a compliment. They know you by your fruit. Others will know you by your fruit. We're talking about even the world. Mm -hmm. They will know where you stand, where, where you don't stand, what you will say, what you won't do. They will know you by your fruit. And so everyone needs to examine themselves. I'm talking about from shepherds on down, you know, people that are popular. Uh, just because you have one million followers on Instagram on. and things like that does not mean, that is not a qualification 
for good fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if there's good fruit that comes from it, that's so be it. That's wonderful. But that's not your criteria. See what the motive would be? I just need to get on here to have that many followers, you see. So you'll know them by their fruit. And if there is something that it's amiss in your life, God is faithful. If you ask him, you know, cut that off. You know, I don't want that in my life. Lord, change that attitude in my life. I'm not going to get easily offended. I'm not going to overreact. You know, I'm not going to get jealous. You know, I'm not going to get into competition. Lord, help me. You know, help me to speak uh, blessings over my enemy. You know, on and on. There's so many things that we can grow spiritually and where we get tested in that. So, um I'm just excited that we are living in really great times. Like it's it's true Christianity God wants. If on fire, you know, when we pray for, when we say fire and passion, you know, I just, oh, I just long to see that. Oh, Jesus, let it be. Mm-hmm. The fire of God. It's see if the fire of God just isn't, you know, being in church and jumping up and down and pr getting prophesied and prophesying over people. Blah, 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 blah. No, is does it work when you get at home? Does it work when you get in the in at your job? Does it work out there? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Jesus. It's like Do you want a million followers? on social media or do you want your marriage to work hmm. see god's not looking for characters he's looking for character <laughs> okay and and sometimes we have we have uh, uh people that are trying to be characters and and portraying us that they're this and that and the other thing and the fact of the matter is uh, they need to grow a little bit. They need they need some adjustments. Okay, you know, do you want to be the next the next uh, star, or do you want to be uh, strong in the God? Okay, because uh, if you be the next star without the strength of God and spiritual growth, you'll not last. Okay, you'll not last. One misconception about spiritual growth it, that we can it occurs instantly if you find the key. <laughs> okay. Uh, one experience, one conference, one CD, and I'm in. No, I've listened to some CDs over my time, and, and I'm going to tell you what, it sparked something in me that started something that put me on a path to grow in, in certain areas. Okay. And so a, a conference, an experience, and a CD can can help, but it's not the the one pill answer to everything. Okay, right. it's you got to keep going. Amen. Proverbs four eighteen and nineteen. It says one of the verses there says the 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 path of the just is like the sun that shines ever brighter and brighter, and so it's a process. Okay, uh, when Israel went in to. Uh, take over the land, they, they uh, possess the land little by little because mm -hmm. the Lord said, if you, if you go in and you run off the wild beasts and everything and run everything, you know, you, you're going to, you don't, you can't take care of it right now. Mm. So we're going to do it a little by little. And so it's, it, it happens little by little. Okay. And it, maturity is, a, is a, isn't a destination we arrive at it's a way of life okay and and so we have to realize that that sometimes we look at people and we compare ourselves with others which the bible says is unwise okay you look at someone that's been been a christian for for 10 years 20 years and you look at their level of of uh, uh spiritual growth and maturity and and you haven't been that long or maybe you've been a Christian longer, but you're, you haven't grown that much. Well, you have to look at how much you've committed or whatever. So don't beat yourself up. Just adjust. Yeah, just adjust. Just adjust. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He didn't say you have to do everything like I do, but with the same commitment and determination and passion that I follow the Lord, 
and listen to what he tells me to do, you do the same thing and you'll be, you'll be prosperous. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, honey, and something that comes up is that, um, well, okay, pastors, just pray for me then. Just pray for me that I'll grow. Well, we can pray for you and we should pray for you and we will pray for you. Amen. Um, There is the doctrine of laying on of hands that when we do pray and lay hot, lay hands on you your gifts get stirred up things get stirred get it gets activated things can get broken yes released but then it's your part to maintain that and to grow it you see okay and then i heard um uh it was dr fuchsia pickett she's went on to be with the lord um but she was one of my spiritual mentors for many years i really looked up to her and she said, people will come up to her and say, give me your mantle. Pray. I pray. want what you have. Yeah, I want what you have. And she says, I can't do that. And she well, why? You know, there's the power of laying on of hands. And she says, no, you have to go through what I went through to get it. So you see, so you have your own fire. You have your own mantle. You have your own story. I can't walk in your shoes. You can get around similar anointings, similar people that that are going to walk and do what you're doing. But you have to forge that path yourself. Mm -hmm. So if if I can leave you with anything tonight is be yourself. Walk in your own path. Allow God to spiritually grow you as you yield to him. You have to yield to him and let him have his way um, where his desires become your desires. But most of all, put your eyes on Jesus. What are you gazing on? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Grow in God. Mm -hmm. Amen? couple things and we'll finish up tonight is uh, <clears throat> spiritual maturity is demonstrated more by behavior than what we say okay uh, actions speak louder in words it's it's more than than one lighters it includes conduct and character I wrote this down our deeds or the things we do must be consistent with our confession mm. okay I've said this for years that occasionally it, 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 it it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna confess you're a Christian, you know, do the best you can to act like it. Okay, <laughs> if you're gonna put a put a, a a Christian bumper sticker on your car, then drive like you're a Christian. Okay, you know. Uh, <laughs> so our beliefs must be backed by behavior. How we behave. Okay, it goes back to what she said about the fruit. By the fruit, you're gonna know them. Okay, by the fruit, by by how. We conduct ourselves, okay? Do we have the fruit of the Spirit in our life, okay? And it doesn't mean you have it all yet. Still some things working on, okay? But you're, you're improving. You're doing better, amen? You're doing better. Mm-hmm. And uh, James uh, chapter 2, it says, Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works, okay? And so what he's saying there is you can say you have faith, but let's say it work. Mm-hmm. See, if you say you have faith and you're all shook up and you're all fearful and uh, your faith isn't very strong, mm-hmm. okay? And that doesn't, you know, it says if, if you faint in the day of adversity, there's a verse that says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It doesn't say you're not saved. It doesn't say you're a heathen. It right. doesn't say you, you, you should be ashamed of yourself. It just says your strength is small. So if you find out your strength is small, then you have to do things to build your strength mm. so that you can withstand some of the things you you have to deal with. It's like okay. if you would go to the gym with and, and get a trainer and he'd say, what do you need to work on? Well, here's my weaknesses, all right? Here's what you do. Work this, work this, work this, work these muscles, and this that you're going to get stronger by doing this. And so it's the same way with, with the spiritual maturity, okay? Mm-hmm. We're in a season, I believe, where, where uh, God is, is saying, you know, the trial of your faith, is more precious than gold. And so now's the time for us to grow in God 
and and uh, uh, you know people go what what's going the future going to be look I'm, I'm believing for a good future all right but man I'm praying and I'm building and I'm believing for for God to come through but while I'm waiting for him to come through I am going to uh, like Tiffany says fortify yourself I okay like that, Tiffany. you're going to have to build yourself build yourself up in the most holy faith praying in tongues praying in tongues all right reading Bible stories and scriptures that, that, you know, Jesus said, take, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Okay. Learn about Jesus, learn to walk, listen to his voice. He's speaking mm -hmm. every day. The spirit mm -hmm. of the Lord is speaking. And so, mm -hmm. so, you know, let God do a work in you and grow you. Okay. Mm. I want you to make it. Yes. I want you to overcome. Yes. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. We're overcomers, okay? Well, if you have no spiritual strength, you're not going to overcome much, okay? So you can, you know, you can quote the scripture, and it's good to quote the scripture, but you also got to build it in yourself too, amen? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like you can go out and buy, buy them fake muscles and, and put a shirt on and have all these muscles and makes you look like you're real strong until you get into a fight mm -hmm. and you find out you weren't where you should be, Okay. The Lord is just giving me a picture right now, honey. I know we need to wrap up, but this is so example of spiritual growth. And that is, you know, guys, whenever you take your kids to the park, whenever they're like, you know, infant to yeah, probably maybe even up to five and six. And I just see a little red wagon and it's all prepared and it's all cuddly and we're pushing it along this little red wagon and you say, oh, aren't you cute? Aren't you cute? You know, do you see that over there and all that? And, and then the Lord showed me a picture of a, an adult trying to ride in that little red wagon mm. and someone's dragging us along. So... That is the example of spiritual growth. There are seasons when we are babies and we need help and we need nurtured. But God is asking us to grow so that maybe we can hold the wagon for someone else to bring them along, okay? Because it looks funny if we're adults and we're trying to ride, in, ride along maybe on somebody else's coattails, maybe on someone else's faith, um, so he wants us to stand strong. And I'm speaking that to women too, you know. Women, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We said that earlier, but that is really a theme for tonight. I love that. One other thing just came to mind is be careful you don't get caught up in escapism. And what I mean by that is that there's so much going on and we're under so much pressure that we just need entertained. And so we use entertainment. We can use TV to escape. All right. Now it's, there's nothing wrong with watching some TV, but if you're doing all of that and, and you're not praying, you're not doing anything to grow spiritually. Okay. You're just, it's not going to help you build strength. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so don't let, don't get caught up in that. Cause the enemy, that's a trick of the enemy. You know, what's the use? Just, just sit back and chill and, and ride it out, okay? Yeah. Now, sometimes prayers change things, okay? And, and effort works, okay? And so take what you're learning, take the scriptures, apply it to your life, and allow God to do a work in you and grow in God and begin to watch yourself, okay? How am I doing, okay? Don't say, I, I did, I've done terrible, mm -hmm. I'm done, no use even trying, no, change. Okay, I'm going to kick in here. I'm going to get. I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to grow in God. I'm mm -hmm. going to grow in God. And maybe you need to get someone that that kind of like mentor you, or you you you're kind of accountable to. Men, pray for me and 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 help me. And and maybe somebody that's that's grown in God, where you go, hey, can you can you help mentor me? Can you can you give me some pointers, some things that I need to do? Yeah. Okay, and like I said, the commitment. Okay, all of those things. When you commit it, commit your way unto the Lord and he'll direct your paths. Yeah. Amen. It will walk. It'll work. It'll work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, we thank you for spiritual growth. Father, I pray mm -hmm. for those watching, those that will watch later. God, that you would just stir something in them that will cause them to rise up and say, I'm going to become more like you, Jesus. I'm going to change. I'm going to adjust. I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. And I'm going to win at life. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. And we break the lies. Mm. We take authority over the lies of less than, mm -hmm. and I can't do it. That's not for me. I break the lies in Jesus' name. And you're going to grow in your thought life. Yep. You're going to grow in your thought life. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we love Amen. you guys. Thank well, you. God for bless you. On. We'll see you Sunday morning, and then we'll be back again next Wednesday night, hopefully at 7 15. Yeah. <laughs> no more technical difficulties. No technical difficulties. Yeah. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Bless you. <laughs>